discussion about matters taxes and finance is very close and dear to the hearts of many Kenyans. Now, the government wants to raise additional 323 billion in the proposed finance bill of 2024 to finance the key Kenya Kwanza government operations in the financial year 2024-2025. Should the proposed bill see the light of the day, your breakfast might get a little bit expensive. So this is why government proposes 16 VAT percent on bread Motor vehicle owners will have to pay at least 2.5% at the time of the issuance of an insurance cover. Telephone and internet and data money transfer services will shoot from 15 to 20%. Kenyans are now raging over the proposed taxes. The what should there, or rather the question now that we are asking, what should the government consider while making the budget? And that is the discussion that we are having tonight. And to help us dissect this topic, the, the proposed finance bill of 2024 is one and only Cuba uh, Houghton. This is the program Support uh, Research International Budget Partnership Kenya. Asante Sana for making time. Asante Sana for having You have a very interesting name. <laughs> yes, I've been told. All right. Well, this is the discussion about finance bill. And this is the proposed finance bill of 2024. It's something that I've, you know, raged some sort of reaction from Kenyans uh, just complaining about uh, the manner at which the government is to them. They believe that the government is overtasking them. Well, First, before even we dive into this particular, uh, particular discussion, we went from, from where you sit and uh, as a budget and policy making expert, well, take us through the process of making, you know, the budget making process and what should government consider before even proposing such, uh, you know, finance bill? Yeah, thank you, and thank you for having us. I think at the International Budget Partnership Kenya, we, we really like taking uh, these conversations um, uh, about public finance, you know, to, to citizens and both in, in government as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a great place to start because the finance bill is a culmination of many decisions that have happened in the budget making process that right. we have here in Kenya. Okay. Um, and it's according to law. So we need the Public Finance Management Act of 2012. Mm -hmm. That's essentially where Kenya gets its um, budget cycle and the key dates. Mm -hmm. um, and this process essentially begins every year, um, in, in August of every year when the CS Treasury or the Treasury releases a circular to all ministries, departments and agencies mm -hmm. um, to start making their budgets. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the beginning of what we call the formulation stage of the, of, of the budget cycle in these four main stages. Okay. Um, and then that kind of turns into, we, we first see the budget, you know, or glimpses of the budget in the sector hearings where mm -hmm. the different sectors uh, come and present their budgets for the next year, okay. uh, what, they, what they propose, mm -hmm. um, which is also an opportunity, the first opportunity for citizens to get involved in the budget making process. Mm -hmm. That then feeds into the budget policy statement, right. uh, which now is a very important document because it has a lot of information on what the budget for the coming year and over the medium term, so mm -hmm. the next two to three years, will look like. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also another opportunity for the public to get involved. Mm -hmm. Now, re in relevance to the, in the reference to the finance bill, mm -hmm. the budget policy statement also outlines the amount of revenue we expect to collect. Mm -hmm. Right, This is tax revenue. Mm -hmm. And so it starts to give an indication of you know, perhaps how much the government is, is projecting that it's going to collect. Mm -hmm. And that has an implication on, on the, the measure that we find in the finance bill. Right? All right. So the budget policy statement essentially uh, marks the, the end of the budget for formulation stage to some extent, with the division of revenue bill as well. Um, and then we move to the approval stage, and that's the stage we're at now, mm -hmm. which is where we're talking about the size of the actual size of the budget and the specific budget lines that are going to go to each uh, ministry department and agency, the different services, mm -hmm. um, and then as well as the finance bill. So the, the budget estimate this is what we talk about now, the expenditure side. So what do we hope to spend? Mm -hmm. But the finance bill uh, essentially is, is, is a document that contains the, the revenue raising measures that government wants to Im employ mm -hmm. in order to raise the additional tax for that year. So like you mentioned, the, the, the additional tax for this year is about 377 uh, billion. And so the Finance Act is meant to kind of fulfill that, that, that gap. So, um, but it's important to, to, to reiterate that it's, it's a process that has been ongoing since August of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, you know, we often say that, you know, there's never a right time to engage in the budget cycle. You just right. engage. Right. So if you had in perhaps been engaging from August, we would have seen some of these measures coming. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, I think it would be good to mention that the finance bill of 2024 is a bit different from our previous finance bills because mm -hmm. it was introduced um, 
it's the first finance bill that has been introduced since we have a mid, we had a medium revenue strategy, medium term revenue strategy, mm -hmm. which is supposed to introduce some some sort of predictability. Mm -hmm. So if you read the medium term revenue strategy, you actually be able to see the taxes that were to be introduced in this finance bill. Mm -hmm. So that's allowed uh, you know citizens and civil society um, and other actors to actually prepare better for this finance bill of all 2024. Right, all right. Yeah. Well, um, now that you you have given us a background on how you know the process, the whole process takes in. Well, there is this now the question that um, is raising a lot of concern from Kenyans, and this is the issue to do with what to consider when you propose such, uh, you know, finance bill, because there is additional of additional revenue to be raised that the government hope will raise. Uh, in the next financial uh, financial year of 2024-2025, that is 323 billion additional on top of what we have, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what should you consider when, of course, uh, proposing this bill, given all the variant at place? Yeah. Okay. I because the bone of of contention is in this now. You know, they raise the additional taxes that the government want to collect. Remember, we have the 16 VAT on bread. We have 2.5% uh, 2 on motor vehicles. We have still uh, another one that is proposed on motorcycles. And all these things, even the uh, beverages, still there is tax uh, that the government hope to collect should this proposed finance bill of 2024 see the light of the day. Yeah. But what should we consider before making that the final document? Yes, I think... Um it's an interesting question because I think that the things that the government has to consider are also the same things that citizens have to consider. Right. And it's also things for us to consider as we go forth uh, during the public participation period which was announced, which okay. is between now and I think 28th of May. Um, so one of them, one of the lenses that we've been looking at the finance bill through is a lens of feasibility. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of lenses. So one is feasibility, one is the connection to services and service delivery, mm -hmm. and the third one is the balance of the two. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to feasibility, uh, what essentially we mean is are the tax measures actually going to raise the tax mm -hmm. uh, revenue that we envision? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'll give you two examples. So. Um, in a previous Finance Act, I believe it was Finance Act of 2021, mm -hmm. there, was a there was a proposition that was introduced and actually approved mm -hmm. uh, to raise the excise duty on uh, mobile data and internet, mm -hmm. right? Um, I believe it was either between 12 and 15 percent or 15 and 20 percent. And what essentially happened is that the, the, the argument was that we're going to raise the tax rates, we're going to collect an additional, I think it was 9 billion uh, shillings. But what happened in practice is that people stopped using data. People mm -hmm. stopped using as much uh, uh, airtime. So mm -hmm. actually the tax revenue from that source went down by 18 percent okay and so, uh, and we'll talk about uh, the effect of of taxing kenyans yes and uh, there is another now aspect because now taxing the essential commodities uh, for example in the last finance bill we're talking about 16 uh, percent on fuel and uh, now we are talking about 16 percent on 16% uh, VAT on bread, which is very essential commodity as far as the livelihood of ordinary Kenyans are concerned. Should this see the light of day? Uh, a price of bread could increase up to 10 shillings, and that is a basic commodity. And many are saying uh, touching bread might actually, you know, mm -hmm. uh, have some repercussion on yeah. many families. So the method that government is using, why task eh, or a add taxation on uh, you know very essential commodities like bread even fuel that many Kenyans consume yeah why focus on that so I think yes there's, there's, there's two aspects that so it also has a bit of a feasibility aspect which is mm -hmm. that if you're going to tax a commodity that everyone uses what are the alternatives available mm -hmm. right are they just going to use less or they're going to use more of something else but the second part I think of that is fairness mm -hmm. right because if you um, you know look at the idea the, the philosophy or the idea behind introducing um, or VAT exempting or zero rating bread in the first place is because it's a good that was assumed to be consumed by the poor, mm -hmm. right? Or by every, you know, you could say every Kenyan. And so if you're going to apply a, a VAT of 16% on bread, then as it was perhaps at some, at some point before they introduced the zero rating, uh, you'd be affecting the poorer more than the rich person, right? Mm -hmm. Because 16% of 100 shillings is 16 shillings, but over 100,000 shillings, it's much a much smaller proportion. Mm -hmm. So. It's you know by by raising by applying a VAT on 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 a, on a, on a common commodity like that. The question is: Is it a progressive tax or is it a regressive tax? Mm -hmm. Does it affect the poor more 
affect the poor less, mm -hmm. right? Or, or does it tax the rich more, or tax the rich, uh, mm -hmm. or the poor more? And so that th those those are kind of the lenses that, that that's important to consider mm -hmm. on, on these commodities. And uh, let me just um, you know get a clarity on this. Uh, now that uh, you've proposed another very uh, interesting aspect, well, this the uh, now let's talk about the sixteen percent on bread. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the rationale? Who does it target? Does it target the poor or the rich? Yeah. So uh, I think it's something that we hope to see in public participation. Once mm -hmm. we've given our views, we hope to get an explanation on the reason why. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, an interview, I believe, a meeting that the CS Treasury was having uh, at some point mm -hmm. um, where he explained the rationale, and it's publicly available. Um, and um, the rationale was essentially that the so because it's zero rated, it means that the person who produces that product mm -hmm. can claim a VAT refund on the inputs, on the taxes they've paid on inputs to produce the bread, so mm -hmm. taxes on flour or whatever it is, or oil. Um, and also at the point of sale, they can claim that VAT back, mm -hmm. which means that now they don't have to pass those costs on to the consumer, so mm -hmm. it's cheap. Mm -hmm. So the argument that was given uh, in that clip was that um, the um, that was a significant portion of money, a mm -hmm. significant amount of money, mm -hmm. and that in reality, the people who are actually get buying bread in shops mm -hmm. where the VAT is presumably applied are actually uh, middle class and not poor people. Mm -hmm. And so what we are doing is subsidizing the middle class. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still yet to kind of fully understand the argument, but uh, that's actually something that we hope to get clarification on. But um, VAT is an example of a consumption tax, mm -hmm. right? Which means that it applies equally to everyone who consumes that product. Right. So like I mentioned, someone who has a smaller income will be more impacted than someone who has a, a, a larger income. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same case for, you know, for, for bread, if you to introduce it on milk as well, among other products. So um, yeah, the question remains as to whether it's actually a fair proposal and there's a, whether there's a way to make it more progressive so that the people who can pay more are actually able to pay more. Okay. Um, yes. Well, um now that you have bring the aspect of fairness, well, we have now the 2.5% on motor vehicles. And um, for those who own mot um, motor vehicles, for example, essentially, this, for many people, you might think that this actually trickled down now, uh, or rather the, the intended target is the owners of the motor vehicle. But if you are in a public service and uh, you own a couple of vehicles, remember, when, when you pay this 2.5% of the proposed now new tax, then that means you'll trickle down the effect to ordinary Kenyan. And uh, I don't know like what you read into this, but do you think maybe this uh, to some sort is unwise move uh, from maybe the government side? So I think there's a, there's a couple of questions you can ask, mm -hmm. which is uh, similar to the, 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 the one that you've made, which is, um, what's the ultimate goal of the tax, mm -hmm. right? Is it a wealth tax? So is it meant to tax those who have assets or the value of something, mm -hmm. uh, especially for those who have those things, those, mm -hmm. those items? Mm -hmm. um, is it a income tax? So you're taxing the, you know, the income that someone can generate from, mm -hmm. from, from you know, perhaps owning a vehicle. Um, and so that, that remains a big question. So it's what exactly is the goal of, of the tax? Because initially, actually, when we had read it, we thought it was a climate-related tax because, um, you know, if you look at the way road use taxes or taxes related to motor vehicles have been used in other countries, mm -hmm. uh, particularly, um, you know, developed countries, is that it's used as a, either as a tool for, to reduce congestion, so it's applied very specifically in certain areas, mm -hmm. or it can be used as a tool to reduce just pollution generally, so mm -hmm. to, to incentivize people towards using electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it doesn't seem like that's the, the, the rationale here. And mm -hmm. so we're still questioning uh, what the rationale is. But it's true uh, that when you oppose, so taking the example of, PSV, of PSVs, is that when you impose a tax, an additional tax that a PSV has to pay, mm -hmm. they're likely to reflect it in, 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 the, in the price of the vehicle, in the mm -hmm. price of you know, their services. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, another concern, of course, there is the amount of taxation that that would add to, to vehicles, for example, PSVs, because mm -hmm. you, know, you already have uh, an import declaration fee when you import a, you know, a vehicle. Um, you already have a road maintenance levy, mm -hmm. which is what we pay on fuel. Uh, PSVs also pay an advanced tax, which is a tax that's uh, applied in in anticipation of the people that you will actually uh, carry over the year. So it's, I think it's according to the seating of the vehicle. Um, and on top of that, even when we pay insurance, there's a premium on insurance. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a tax we pay on insurance premiums, rather, of 4%. Mm -hmm. So now we'd be adding another 2.5% okay. uh, to all of that. So ultimately, um, you know, the, the question that could be raised is that, is there a different way to frame this motor vehicle ta circulation tax so that mm -hmm. perhaps it tar targets those who have more luxury vehicles, right? Um, because then it would be perhaps more of a wealth tax. Um, but there's, yeah, there's still a number of questions around, around whether um, it will actually, what the policy goal is and whether it will actually achieve that in practice. Okay. Well, uh, yesterday, President William Ruto, you know, mentioned a few, you know, things that uh, probably might concern Kenyans, and this in regard to taxation policy. And uh, he's hoping maybe it will go up to, let's say, was it 23%? Mm -hmm. And of course, now this, you know, in regard to this, now this now begs another question about our taxation policy as Kenya compared to other countries uh, in Africa. So how is our taxation policy here in Kenya? If you compare to our neighbors like Uganda, do we over task our people or where are we really? Because yeah. mm -hmm. the president's message should really, you know, worry many Kenyans. Now that means that today you are talking about additional 300 and uh, 23 billion shillings. Who knows about the next financial year? Yeah, so I think uh, before we start like comparisons of other countries, it's good to, to understand how we got ourselves in this situation. Mm -hmm. And that the the reason why, uh, or perhaps the rationale behind all of this aggressive, you could say, revenue mobilization, is that um, Kenya's public debt crisis has become a, a, an issue that it can't avoid anymore, mm -hmm. right? And the reason, you know, the fact that in the coming financial year, mm -hmm. uh, alongside the, the, the finance bill here, the document is the budget estimates, and mm -hmm. they actually show that, or they propose that we'll spend actually, out of every 100 shillings that we collect in tax revenue, uh, we'll be spending 63 shillings on public debt, mm -hmm. which means we have just 37 shillings to spend on services. Mm -hmm. So that also explains why we, we need to collect more revenue. So we have more money available for services and servicing public debt. Public mm -hmm. debt. And so our tax situation is, or rather why this debate has really come up quite heavily now um, about Kenya's tax system and whether we're collecting enough is because over time uh, the, the need for tax revenue has, has increased, mm -hmm. right? Um, but when you go to, to comparisons to other countries, it's sometimes it can be difficult because it can be comparing apples to oranges where a country has a, significant, a significantly higher uh, uh, GDP, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which means their capacity to collect taxes is, is, is a lot more. Or they have higher GDP growth, which means mm -hmm. the, the increase in taxes. And is that is the higher. case of Kenya right now? Um, well, it depends on wh who Because the comparing. president says um, we are not up to standard according to our GDP. Yeah. And of course, uh, he thinks maybe going forward, uh, Kenyans should actually, you know, pay more. Mm. And do you think maybe that's a prudent move? So it's... It's the, so the amount of tax you collect as a percentage of whatever, whether it's GDP or to a percentage of uh, you know whatever it could be, mm -hmm. is a factor of many things. One, it's a factor of how much of your tax rates, mm -hmm. right? So your income tax rate, you know, is it is it high or is it low, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another one is the um, the efficiency of your tax system. Right. Is it easy for people to pay tax? Is it easy for KRA, for example, to collect tax? Mm -hmm. Right. And then uh, perhaps a very significant part of that is the income and the income growth of the people in the economy and the businesses mm -hmm. um, and the economy generally, so the growth of the economy. Um, so, you know, perhaps one of the problems that Kenya has been facing is that our economy has not been growing mm -hmm. um, as fast, mm -hmm. right, in a way that actually allows us to collect more taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, you know, alongside that, there's also the idea that uh, perhaps our tax procedures could be more effective, right? And I think that's what the, the government has been trying to do with E-teams and a lot of different other reforms on, on, on how to make tax collection easier and, and how to um, particularly uh, expand the tax base, right? Okay. Um, but what we do see is that there's quite a bit of emphasis maybe on the tax rates as opposed to the economic growth aspect. Mm -hmm. Because if you, to, if you were to have a tax rate of 10% now, and in 2030, they're still 10%. But your income, your income has actually grown significantly. You collect a lot more revenue, perhaps, mm -hmm. than by increasing the tax rate itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a balance of those three. And so when we're considering 
whether how we're doing in comparison to our partners. We need to look at all those three as opposed to just you know tax to to, to GDP ratio, all which right. is which is the, the, what the president is referring to, I believe. All right, and um, there is another you know a very tricky or rather tricky situation between now the government and of course Kenyans. They need to balance. Where do you strike uh, you know the balance between now not over ta over taxation and at the same time not you know under taxation so the government is in a state whereby it has to balance between now the needs of kenyans given all these variant into play remember this is a country that um, it's fair to say a uh, majority of kenyans are unemployed and of course um, when you uh, impose heavy taxation on unemployed kenyans you know there repercussions that will come with it so where do you draw the line excellent question and uh, in fact I would say that whether you're being overtaxed or not is subjective mm -hmm. which means that depending you know you could have the same tax rate in different countries mm -hmm. but they may not feel overtaxed right so I think the 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 perhaps the disconnect is that you know perhaps Kenyans are not able to connect the tax that they're collecting to the services they're receiving right mm -hmm. which i think is why it's so important to connect this conversation around the finance bill to the budget estimates because that's an indication of the tax of the services you'll receive over the coming financial year mm -hmm. so for example if you look at the 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 budget for the next year mm -hmm. is it reflective of the services that you want to consume or mm -hmm. the services that you want to pay for with your taxes mm -hmm. right because you could argue that if uh, you know if we paid even up to 70 percent of our incomes in tax right mm -hmm you know, extreme scenario, mm -hmm. but our children went to school mm -hmm. for free, right? We, when we go to the hospital, we are treated. When mm -hmm. we need an ambulance, we are treated free of charge, okay. right? Or at least we're treated uh, fast, and then we have conversations about, about being charged. Mm -hmm. um, that when there's heavy rains, it doesn't flood all the time, mm -hmm. right? That our roads, roads are actually resilient, right? So the, the issue of overtaxing, I think, uh, touches it's not necessarily a factor of how much people are making mm -hmm. but how much the government is perhaps also delivering in terms of services mm -hmm. because this because the the I think yeah, the disconnect for many Kenyans is whether there's actually uh, a comparison between the tax I'm paying mm -hmm. and the services I'm receiving mm -hmm. because that's what the taxes are, are supposed to go, go towards mm -hmm. um, and so the question over taxation I think it boils down to, to whether people are actually getting the services that they actually want to pay for mm -hmm. um, yes all right um for a nation, but this one, first of all, we'll have to. I'll have to get your opinion on this. Do you think Kenyans are being overtaxed? <laughs> I cannot speak on behalf of Kenyans. Um, as a Kenyan, of course. As a Kenyan myself. Talk to me based on your perspective. I think there are things that the government could do mm -hmm. to improve the way they deliver public services, mm -hmm. right? Um, in a way that would perhaps equate more the the the, the tax that 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 is collected and the tax that is and then the services that are removed all right um, and that's a factor of many things of course but I do believe that there, there is an opportunity for that mm -hmm. yes all right now now this now you know beg the question you know the effect of over taxation what is the effect if you overtax a nation what is the final result what could it have, the effect that it will have on a country? Now that is where this discussion is, discussion is now narrowing down to. Mm -hmm. So what is the effect of overtaxation? Well, the, again, I'd say overtaxation is subjective, but the, the, uh, the benefit I think that we've seen, uh, let me say the benefit, or one of the outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, especially from the finance bill of last year mm -hmm. and, and the finance bill of this year, is that citizens are becoming more passionate mm -hmm. and aware about their public finances, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think for a lot of Kenyans, it was the first time they heard of a finance bill last year, last year right? Yeah. Um, and so I think one of the positive outcomes is of this is that people have realized mm -hmm. that there's, there should be a relationship between the taxes that are collected from me, whether they are over, over, over um, you know, whether they are too much or too little, mm -hmm. uh, between those taxes and the services that I receive. Right, and I think that's where the that's where it's narrowing down to, where people are realizing that um, if you know if I'm going to pay all these taxes, fine, 
right? They, you know, let, let's let's work on making these taxes efficient and feasible, right? But we'll pay them. Mm -hmm. But is there services that we're going to see in, in return for that, mm -hmm. right? When I go to a hospital, will my NHIF card work? Mm -hmm. You know, or will I face certain challenges that uh, perhaps I shouldn't be facing if I wasn't paying tax? All right. Um, and so I think that's one of I'd say one of the outcomes of of this kind of overtaxing conversation, which is that people become like the and I'll give you an example. So with the finance bill of 2023. I think we saw the one of the most robust public participation exercises that you know perhaps Kenya has seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. We saw you know over a thousand memorandums submitted to the Finance and National Planning uh, Committee of the National Assembly. We saw a very good public participation report, surprisingly mm -hmm. good public participation report mm -hmm. um, on on you know showing exactly what people proposed. Um, and sometimes it was just someone asking a question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just someone saying we don't we disagree with this proposal. They won't even give me a justification. They just said that this one will affect us badly, right? And the and the the committee actually responded to that line by line. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's been one of the positive outcomes of this, which is that people are starting to, um, as Kenyans are starting to become alive to this conversation mm -hmm. and to realize it's not just something that happens in parliament or something that happens in treasury, that this is something that actually affects all of us and that we can actually get involved in. All right. Well, one of the most interesting things that um, should worry you as a Kenya, of course, is the disconnect between this finance bill and of course the expectations of majority of Kenyans and um, when this government rode into you know power one of the key promises was to lower the cost of living and uh, what majority of Kenyans are feeling when you increase the value on let's say bread and of course just like you mentioned the last finance bill was a very robust one majority of Kenyans put in their input and of course they had at least some sort of discussion on what they think should be the final product. And of course, when you have a disconnect like this, and uh, uh, at one point the government has to balance, at the same time there is Kenyans who need at least the cost of living to be lowered, even as we wind up this discussion. This disconnect, does it worry you as a Kenya? Um, well, I'd say that... Uh, Yes and no, mm -hmm. because of course, when 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 um, it's unhealthy for any democracy when there's a disconnect or when there's when perhaps a people don't feel heard, mm -hmm. right? Um, but again, I do believe that what the last year last year of the finance bill 2023 and engagement has shown us, and even this year, mm -hmm. is that Kenyans are quite keen on being heard, right? Right. even if it's just Kenyans on Twitter or Kenyans on Facebook. Um, they're keen on being heard. And so if you look on Facebook or, or let's say Twitter, mm -hmm. a lot of the conversation now is how do we, how do we submit our views? Mm -hmm. A lot of the conversation is, uh, guys, let's, let, let's organize ourselves. Here's a template for a memorandum, send it out, right? Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that, you know, for, although that disconnect is clear, mm -hmm. I think Kenyans are, are more passionate about getting this, involved in these conversations. And not just in Nairobi, I, I believe it's, it's, it's around, it's, it's across Kenya. All right. Um, yes, so I do believe that there, there is hope. Okay, and uh, talking of hope and um, of course this particular discussion about um, the finance bill 2024, the proposed finance bill 2024, uh, that um, the government is hoping to at least collect additional 323 billion shillings should it see the light of the day. And of course it has uh, sparked some sort of outrage among Kenyans who feel that these are punitive form of taxations that the government is about to subject them and today we are getting the insight about the proposed finance bill what you need to know as ordinary citizen and how it concerns you and of course uh, that is where we leave it at this particular point thank you so much cuba hutton that is program support research international budget partnership kenya for making time Santa sana thank you